Hi Virgos and welcome to your April 2022 general tarot forecast. This is Sky coming on in disbelief that it's April. We're already four months into this calendar year, isn't that crazy? Um, wow, uh, what interesting energy coming up for you. I feel really hopeful um, for what you're facing this month, Virgo. I think that you're going to get a lot of confirmation of um, basically things being okay and things like not really... Uh, being maybe the threat that you thought that they were. I think that this is a really hopeful month uh, for you. It's very rejuvenating. It's very replenishing. And I think you're going to rest up and uh, get the energy to uh, face anything that you've needed to face. Um, uh, as a lot of you know, uh, every day that I do a reading, I like to spend time meditating and also thinking about, uh, you know, what the experiences I'm having that day uh, how those correlate to the sign that I'm reading for. Um, and today, as I've been preparing to do your reading, Virgo, I basically just felt really rejuvenated, really replenished, and I felt hopeful in general. So I think that that's what uh, is going to be happening for you this month. Um, I think that you have to start acknowledging more the power that you have or the freedom that you have to make changes and not feel so confined, okay? Uh, not feeling confined by the future, not feeling confined by what you've already created, and knowing that you have the right to um, make the changes that you need to as well. Um, I believe that after we came past all of those uh, Capricorn stelliums in 2020, a lot of people felt really locked into their identity or into who they were. And uh, while consistency is a great thing and while continuation is a very empowering, securing, uh, you know, method, I do feel that sometimes people need to reinvent themselves and sometimes people need to make changes. So um, if you've been feeling that way as well, Virgo, you might start thinking about how you can um, do that and uh, also how the need to prolong a version of yourself or prolong a certain identity has um, maybe led to stagnation or led to a feeling of being drained, at least. Uh, the main cards that I'm looking towards in your reading are Four of Swords and the Star. So uh, one way or another, April of 2022 needs to see you feeling more rested and more energized in general. Uh, you only have two major Arcana cards in your reading this month, the Hermit and the Star. Um, so it's kind of a very fleeting energy. It's like a passive kind of healing. It's a uh, easy, more vulnerable connection with you that sees you overcoming any past heartbreaks and uh, being able to overcome this future obsession or this future tripping tendency. Seven of Cups coming up for so many people this month. And over the last really year or two, I've been seeing just Seven of Cups over and over and over again. People are so obsessed with what's on the horizon or so focused on what they might do in the future or what they will become that they're losing track of where they currently are. And maybe letting some things outlive uh, their time to basically continue propping up this future tripping place, okay? So if there is a dividing line or a separation between where you currently are and what you're like thinking about for most of the day, I would see that this month and I would start to rest into what you are really currently living and um, being able to actually see how that connects to what you want and start to make those steps instead of uh, being stuck in a dreamer's quandary, I'll call it, or a kind of like never-ending state of uh, dreaming. We want to really see ourselves realizing our dreams. We have a Jupiter-Neptune conjunction happening on your axis this month, happening in your opposing sign of Pisces. Big, big deal for you, Virgo. Huge deal. Likely a change in your daily routine as your sign, the sixth house. Virgo rules over the daily routine. It rules over the um, <clears throat> sort of consistency archetype. And with that opposition, uh, with Jupiter and Neptune, it's really maybe threatening your uh, security and your um, kind of known daily routine because it's asking you to commit to a dream that you don't have a lot of context with. And that can be kind of scary for a Virgo because uh, your routine is everything for you. So what I would do if, if I were you is I would start to create new routines that revolve around making your dreams a reality. Maybe this is research. Maybe this is um, planning. Maybe this is strategy. Maybe this is 
creating questions, okay, uh, there's something, this is interesting. I'll, I'll share this little uh, secret. It's not a secret, but it's a, it's a, something that I probably couldn't share with the other signs in the same way uh, and them understand it so well. Um, but sometimes the perfect answer to a problem lies in formulating the question well, okay? <laughs> kind of a crazy thing that a lot of people don't think about. You know, if we have a problem in our lives or if we have something that we haven't been able to solve or we haven't been able to figure out, oftentimes we just haven't been able to really formulate the question. And you know how sometimes when you finally ask that question in class or you finally go to that advisor or you finally, you know, get to that place and you're like, I actually don't need them to answer this question for me. I actually, that's a very self-explanatory because you, you figured out the question. So I think this month is about figuring out questions for you, Virgo, and um, it could, for some of you, also stretch out for quite a few months as well, but that's going to be really a healing place to start. Um, let's talk about your week to week. In the first week, you've got Queen of Cups, you're down by Page of Wands. Fire and water coming together. It's kind of steamy. It's like a clash of elements. On one hand, you want this emotional uh, validation, and on the other hand, you want creative outlets. So it's like part of you wants to express and part of you wants to be expressed upon by another. So some of you could be like uh, being tired of being single with that combination, but also like enjoying the uh, um, freedom of being single as well. It's kind of like that clash. So we want to, again, maybe formulate these questions better or uh, get to a place where we know more so what it is that we actually want. Um, the first week will basically show you where there's any clash and also why that clash is actually maybe good for you or creating the right outcome in the long term. Week two, you've got the Four of Swords rooted down by the Seven of Cups. Um, yeah, it looks like you need to spend some time focusing on uh, the long term or you need to spend more time um, healing from future tripping, okay? Looking at where you are now and who you are now seeing that, not letting that lose its relevance. Napping. Okay, I think you guys need a nap. Maybe it's about putting like a 30-minute power nap into your daily routine, like midday or something, if you can do that. Uh, maybe you need um, some type of new resting ritual, maybe a new skincare routine at nighttime, something that ritualizes your resting and your remembrance or um, your acknowledgement of where you are right now instead of where you stand to be, okay? Week three, you've got uh, two of pentacles rooted down by three of swords. Um, so there is a decision. There's a decision that you're making about um, how to heal your heart as well. So you've got like your future trip or a future tripping issue and also a heartbreak issue wanting to come up for healing this month. And you're going to have to decide on that in the third week because the fourth week is a big change or a big injection of energy, but the third week is uh, presenting you a crossroads or some type of decision about the state of your heart or about the way your heart has been for a while. And it's important to kind of see this progression where you're like in a much smoother water now. You know, I always say with two of pentacles, like maybe this decision is hard to make, but you have at least come on to even ter territory, even ground. Like you're not in this um, stormy area that's behind you. So try to not get upset about this decision. Try to see it as a victory of sorts, like you have come past some sort of storm. And then in the fourth week, yes, I would say the most important week of your month, the Hermit rooted down by the star. The first thing that I noticed about that combination is uh, we have the star, which has a depiction of nudity, but then we also have the hermit, which is totally like cloaked and totally um, kind of covered, even hooded uh, with with um, uh, garments. So um, that, again, is kind of like the first week, isn't it? There's a clash there. There's this complete revealing of truth, vulnerability, who I am, and, and uh, not needing to hide myself with the star. And then with the hermit, there's like comfort in being hidden or having a veil or having some type of um, hiding place or uh, ability to not be known, some type of anonymity. So how do we 
work with both of these things where I'm seeing like Virgos on one hand, they want to be this like fiery, clear, transparent person. And on the other hand, they want to be this kind of like emotive, like safely tucked away, hidden kind of, um, you know, seemingly more safe person. It's like a battle of projection of self. I think that everybody has these different parts to their personality. Like everybody has different scales of like, you know, in this situation, I like to be more out there. And then in this situation, I like to be more reserved. Um, but this at a certain point in time is going to start becoming difficult because it starts to contradict, right? You know, like um, it becomes strange when we have a very like flamboyant out there person who, as we start to get to know them better, has a lot of like hidden kind of components of themselves. It, it makes for enigmatic people. It makes for complexity. But also, it's like a, what you see isn't what you get, and people can get like uh, freaked out about that. So how to channel this positively, um, how to work with this combination. I think that it is kind of maybe a societal thing as well. Like I see this not just in individuals, but I see this uh, in a, at a collective level where it's like there's some stuff we want to share and then there's some stuff we don't want to share. And can we have our cake and eat it too? Can we have very exposed parts of ourselves and then very hidden parts of ourselves? Can that actually work? It seems like that is a part of most people's lives at this point in time, you know? So for example, people want to get on social media and talk about their uh, complaints or talk about also really like personal uh, deep issues that they've been through, but then they can't even like reveal these things to their own families. It's stuff like that. And, and I would, this isn't like personal really to you, Virgo, but I would really watch out for stuff like that, okay? Uh, that I'm not saying that you guys are doing that or that, um, you find yourself in that situation, but it's a kind of a good kind of cutout example of this archetype or this situation where it's like, can you believe that some people will put like such personal things about themselves on social media that they are like secrets, but it's on social media or um, people who, I don't know, want uh, some type of status quo position also um, unwilling to reveal who they've been before. You know, it's like wanting one thing that contradicts who we've been or what we have had or, or our past. I think this is basically like identity crisis or like the process of self-reinvention. And it's like deciding what you want to project and what you don't. Um, so try to really make sense to yourself with that. because That's different for every person. Everybody has different things they want to reveal and different things that they want to keep personal or private. And it looks like a really good month basically here in, um, here in April to start kind of making a self mantra of like what I want to be known for, what I don't want to be known for, what I want to be private in my life, what I don't want to be, what I want to be public. And uh, not being so um, spontaneous with that. Uh, that feels like a good thing to do this month. And, and let's talk more about that in your extended Virgo. I'm going to put together an extended reading for you. Basically, in conclusion for this month, like you're you're great. Just keep things in the present and focus on that rejuvenation. And I think you'll be good. Um, but yes, in the extended, I'll get a central theme to supporting themes. And we'll talk more about discernment as well and understanding what we how to kind of know and a dialogue with ourselves about what we want to, uh, um, you know, kind of reveal and what we don't. So uh, let's look into that in your extended. Much love, Virgos. Bye.